After the Ingenuity helicopter was deployed on the surface of Mars, NASA began what was expected to be just a month-long demonstration. This has since turned into a multi-year journey, testing the small helicopter against much worse conditions than originally planned. This includes the Martian seasons, in winter in particular, which brings harsh temperatures and weather. When operating a small solar-powered piece of technology on Mars, these conditions affect almost every part of the mission. From dust on the solar panels, to reduced exposure to the sun, and even battery conditions, it's not easy to survive. All of which make Ingenuity's current condition even more impressive as it continues to fly around the surface. This being said, NASA had to do a lot of problem solving in order to keep Ingenuity running and survive the winter. Here I'll go more in depth into how the helicopter survived, what it was up against, what to expect in the coming months, and more. Last year around May, for the first time in the over year long extended mission, NASA had a loss of communications with Ingenuity from the downlink of May 3rd and May 4th. Telemetry from Ingenuity confirmed that the loss of communications was due to insufficient battery state of charge, or SOC, going into the night, which resulted in a reset of the mission clock. This daily SOC deficit persisted for a decent portion of Martian winter until around September and October. However, after a week of anomaly investigation, two souls dedicated to data collection, and the heroic efforts of the Perseverance and Ingenuity operations team, the agency reported that they re-established reliable communications with Ingenuity. Quite the feat when looking at the conditions and weather. At the time, they had reached the point in Martian late fall slash early winter when Ingenuity could no longer support the energy demands of nominal operations. Starting on the evening of Sol 426, they believed Ingenuity started experiencing overnight battery brownouts, drops in the battery's voltage, which resets the electronics. Due to the seasonal decrease in available solar energy, increases in airborne dust density, and the drop in temperatures, the energy demand to keep the electronics powered and warm throughout the night surpassed Ingenuity's available energy budget. Shown here is a plot of the environmental conditions at Jezero Crater. The black line is a model of airborne dust density over a Martian year, and the expected daily insulation, the amount of sun's rays reaching the solar panel, is illustrated by a green dotted line. Back in May of last year, they were in the part of the Martian year with a peak amount of dust density, combined with falling insulation. Not shown in this plot is the additional trend of lower average daily temperatures, which also adds to Ingenuity's energy demand. While in winter, each night the battery SOC could fall low enough to where the heater thermostat could no longer keep the battery and surrounding electronics at their program set point. As a result, Ingenuity's electronics were reaching overnight ambient temperatures of approximately minus 80 degrees Celsius or minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. The battery could also no longer support the voltage regulators and mission clock. Not to mention, each morning when Ingenuity warms up, charges its drained batteries, and attempts to turn on its computer, it's booting according to a misaligned alarm schedule, which is out of synchronization with Perseverance. When Perseverance attempted communications with the helicopter on the morning of Sol's 427 and 428, Ingenuity didn't respond because it was waking up at the wrong time. The team reacted by uplinking a full soul search activity with the helicopter base station, or HBS, on board Perseverance to attempt to communicate with Ingenuity during one of its misaligned alarmed windows, which succeeded. Soon after Sol 429 and nearly every soul since, NASA has been in daily contact with Ingenuity by using similar morning searching activities during what they believe to be the most likely times when Ingenuity would be sufficiently charged to attempt booting its electronics. These morning search activities reprogram the helicopter's mission clock each soul, which, for the duration of that soul, enables additional schedule activities to make use of the energy that they do have available. At the time, they would reach sunset with about 68% SOC, with an estimated need of at least 70% to keep everything powered overnight. This 2% SOC deficit was expected to grow to a 7% deficit once they reached winter solstice, at which point conditions began to improve. During this winter season, the agency's latest module suggested that regardless of modifications to their overnight thermostat strategy, it would be extremely challenging or even impossible to keep the electronics core module or ECM components warm and within their nominal temperatures overnight. Although component failure has always been a risk that they have carried since rover deployment, the risk became magnified. ECM components were normally kept warm overnight by the battery heater. They expected that ECM components were thermal cycling down to the ambient overnight temperatures of minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 80 degrees Celsius. At the time, NASA had limited ECM component testing to suggest that select components may survive through the winter, but they couldn't predict how the entire ECM would fare throughout winter. Cold soaking electronics is believed to have caused the end of the opportunity in Spirit Mars rover missions. Given the elevated risk posture, the focus was to prioritize data downlink from Ingenuity to the HBS. They had a handful of heli to HBS transfer activities left before all unique data were copied from Ingenuity to the HBS. 
Specifically, they copied flight performance logs, electronics logs, and high-resolution color images from the last eight flights that were still on board Ingenuity. After all the critical logs were transferred, the team proceeded with a recommissioning phase during which they re-established Ingenuity's flight readiness given the ongoing overnight cold cycling. Like during the technology demonstration phase, they performed a high-speed spin before proceeding to flight. The idea being, should Ingenuity receive a clean bill of health, they would be ready to execute a short flight to the southwest in Flight 29. When Ingenuity is flying, the onboard flight control system keeps close track of the helicopter's current position, velocity, and orientation. It does so with the help of a sensor suite consisting of an inertial measurement unit, or IMU, which measures accelerations and angular rates in three directions, a laser rangefinder, which measures the distance to the ground, and a navigation camera, which takes pictures of the ground below. The data from these sensors is processed by a set of algorithms implemented on Ingenuity's navigation computer. For the algorithms to function properly, they must be initialized prior to takeoff with an estimate of Ingenuity's roll and pitch altitude. This is where the inclinometer comes in. The inclinometer consists of two accelerometers, whose sole purpose is to measure gravity prior to spin-up and takeoff. The direction of the sense gravity determines how Ingenuity is oriented relative to the downward direction. During that Martian winter, NASA revealed that this navigation sensor had stopped functioning. Thankfully, Ingenuity's sensor suite provides some redundancy when it comes to sensing altitude on the ground. The IMU contains accelerometers, which can be used to estimate the initial altitude. This being said, the IMU is not purpose-built for sensing static orientation, so its initial altitude estimates will generally be somewhat less accurate. Taking advantage of this redundancy requires a patch to Ingenuity's flight software. The patch inserts a small code snippet into the software running on Ingenuity's flight computer, intercepting incoming garbage packets from the inclinometer and injecting replacement packets constructed from IMU data. To the navigation algorithms, everything will look as before. The only difference being that the received inclinometer packets do not actually originate from the inclinometer. Anticipating that the situation could potentially arise, NASA prepared the required software patch prior to last year's arrival on Mars and kept it on the shelf for this eventuality. This allowed them to move quickly with the update, and the process of uplinking it to Ingenuity was already underway. These quick fixes, along with redundant systems, helped Ingenuity survive the Martian winter and continue to operate years after landing. The Ingenuity helicopter has been through a lot during its mission on Mars. Due to its longer than expected mission life, the agency has continued to run into unique scenarios that they weren't necessarily planning on. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.